All right, you guys have asked for it. You've asked for it for years, and it is finally coming. A Planet Chili series on D3D12. So I'm going to be calling this thing that we're making here D3D12 Shallow Dive. And essentially, the goal is to just wrap our heads around the D3D12 API. It's fundamental, you know, core concepts that you need to understand in order to interact with it. And we want to understand how it differs. The main difference is between interacting with 12 and interacting with 11. So we want to get a bird's eye view of this thing. We want to fit it into our head. And in order to do that, we want to basically remove a lot of other complexities that would get in the way of our understanding the API. And that's why I'm making this a shallow dive. So what does shallow dive mean according to Chile? Well, first of all, we're not going to be doing any real architecture on this thing. We're going to try to keep it basically as much as possible just in a single function. So all the API calls and everything will just be in a single function that runs top to bottom with probably a loop at the bottom to run, you know, your, your update. So we're not going to organize our code, factor in, you know, different operations into their own functions. Um, and we're not going to create classes to represent components of the system or anything. And, and let me tell you, direct, if you are the kind of person who likes to make architectures to build these machines out of these different components that work together and that automate a bunch of processing, I mean, D3D12 is your API because you, in order to really harness it and to get the efficiency out, you, you really got to build those systems yourself. Whereas with 11, a lot of that stuff was handled by the driver. But we're not going to worry about building stuff like that in this series. We're just going to worry about understanding the API. Now, the other thing is I'm going to be going over, you know, all the steps you need to set up your pipeline to render different things. Um, but I'm not going every time I type a new D3D12 function, I'm not going to go to the documentation and explain every little nitty gritty detail about it. I'm going to give you some commentary, but I'm also going to keep things moving. So we're not going to study every aspect of every individual function or interface. We're just going to look at, you know, what it does for us right now in the problem that we're trying to accomplish. And this series is not going to be implementing a lot of the advanced features that you hear about, you know, like mesh, like uh, ray trace acceleration, that sort of thing. We're just trying to get the basics down and understand how those things work in D3D12. Now, like I said, I'm going to keep the code base as simple, as dirt simple as possible. We're going to sacrifice everything for simplicity. We're going to sacrifice efficiency. We're going to sacrifice elegance. We're going to sacrifice code reusability. We just want it to be easy for us to understand. We want to grok this API. And there's a certain subset of people that are just salivating, like, oh, Chili's going to make the whole thing from scratch. He's going to start from, a, from an empty project, and he's going to do everything from the main. And no, I'm not going to be, I'm not going to waste my time messing around with, like, creating windows or stuff like that no because i have that that's already actually in the chill framework that we've been creating in a different series so i'm going to actually use that stuff from the chill framework for things like uh, for creating a window and for also for logging and that will be out of this project, out of sight, out of mind, basically. We'll just use it. And that might trigger a small subset of people, and you people are just going to have to deal with it. So it's going to be very explicit, very transparent with respect to the direct 3D things. But everything else is going to be abstracted away, and just we're going to use it from a different library that I'm going to be bringing in. The other thing is that I will also be using D3DX12. That is just a useful thing, and I see it in all the examples online, so I don't see why I wouldn't want to learn that. And so that'll be a header that we import. So if for some reason you have in your head some kind of uh, constraint or condition that you can't use anything but the stuff supplied by the Windows SDK, then I, I don't know. I, I don't know what to do for your brain gremlins there. You're going to have to handle that yourself. All right, so I think that basically goes over what this thing is going to be. Like I said, we're going to be using stuff from the chill framework. So let's uh, let's fork that to begin with. Son of a bitch, you're not going to let me fork my own thing. Oh, no, I have to I have to clone it and then upload it again. Is that how you're going to do me? All right, I think if we just go like import repository here and then we type in the URL, it'll let us do it. Maybe. Ha! GitHub. Microsoft, you can't cock block me. I'm going to fork my own repositories as much as I want. All right, let's clone this bad boy. 
Oh yeah. Here we are. Open her up. Let me just make sure it builds as is. Uh, this shouldn't be our startup. So we set this one as a startup project and there we go. Here's all of our windows. Go away. Okay, so we've got our starting point here. We don't really need the console sandbox, so let's just like burninate that one. Perfect. We'll keep the unit test. They're not hurting anybody. Uh, I could add a new project for the direct 3D12 stuff, but I'm not gonna. I'm just gonna put it in the, the same project that builds the EXE because I don't care. So I wanna keep my D3D12 stuff separate as possible from everything else. So I am gonna create header code pair app.cpp. So in app.h here, we are gonna include i window and we have our run function for our app. And that's just gonna do all the direct 3D12 stuff. It just takes in one thing, the window, because it needs the h wind, right, to create the swap chain and it needs to have a way of knowing when it's time to exit. Here's the empty body of our function here. Now we need to bring in D3DX12 or D3D12X or whatever it's called. So that's apparently available here. Here it is. Allow me to download it. Open the file in the explorer here. We bring that over here. If we refresh you here in here, let's just add it. Include in the project, even though it's not an actual build target or anything. All right, so we have D3DX12. What else do we need? All right, so we're going to need some an easy, quick utility for checking errors and reporting them. Now, if you've checked out any of the official Direct3D11 or 12 samples, you often see something like this function here, throw if failed. And it takes in an H result and it just checks to see if it's an OK result. And if not, it's going to throw an exception. And that's fine, but I mean, it's ugly, right? All the functions now that you want to check errors for, they now all start with this throw if failed. It's like extra noise. You're reducing your signal to noise ratio. Uh, so it's more difficult to read the code. It's, you know, it's more annoying to type out and it doesn't include like the line number of where you get this because it's it's not a macro or anything. Uh, so this isn't great. I don't like it. I want my lines to start with the thing that they're actually doing. You know, command Q signal, not this BS. And I've got an amazing solution for this that I'm gonna share with you guys. So I'm adding a header code pair here, graphics error.h. All right, let me explain what we are aiming for here. So we don't wanna do something like this. What I want, is I want to be able to call my API function and at the very end here, just insert the return value, the H result, into some checker object. And what this object is going to do is going to check the H result. If it fails, it's going to throw an exception, but it is also going to capture the line number and it is going to translate the H result into human readable form. So how do you get the line number from a freaking operator. You can't have a macro like that. What, is, what other options do we have for getting the line number? Well, let's include something called std source location. This is a fairly new thing in the standard library. And uh, what it allows us to do, well, let me show you. I'm gonna create something called struct hr grabber. Uh, and in here, we're gonna make a constructor takes in an H result and it takes in a source location. Now I should actually make this an unsigned int here just so I don't have to include windows. Now here's the, here's the secret sauce. So what you do with source location is you make a default to function called source location current. And what that means is it's going to be called in the context of where this function was called. And that allows you to capture source location much in the same way a macro can do it, but without using macros. So make this HR grabber. When you construct it with an HR, you get the HR and the location where it was constructed. Now we're gonna create a dummy structure, doesn't do anything, and we're gonna create a global instance of that structure called a check. This is what we're gonna be using to activate our insertion operator. So now we make an operator. On the left-hand side, it takes the HR grabber. So that will be basically our direct 3D function call. And on the right hand side, it takes the checker token and that's so that we can, you know, activate this operator. And it's the body of the operator that's gonna do the work. And hopefully now you see why we need this HR grabber because the operator insertion can only take two parameters, but we need the HR and the checker token 
and we need the source location parameter to capture the location. And that's why we use the HR grabber so we can get the HR and the location as a single parameter. So here we go. A little bit of bullshit, but trust me, it's gonna be beautiful. So on graphics.air.cpp, we're gonna supply some of the bodies for those functions. Uh, yeah, this one just sets those values, that's fine. This one, we need a little work. Let's include our Windows utilities here. Let's include uh, ranges. Let's include format. Get my happy little shortcuts in here. Now, basically, this is what we wanna do if the uh, H result is a failure. We wanna throw a runtime error, but I wanna translate the error string. And I also wanna clean it up a little bit because the default one you get is kinda stinky. So we get the error description. We wanna convert that to a narrow string because that's what runtime error wants. So let's add in here, get our string utility. Now, um, it also tends to put in like CRLF new lines into the error string, which I don't like. So we're gonna transform the new lines into spaces and just remove the uh, line feeds altogether. And then we'll store that as a string. And then we want to throw an exception with that information all in there. So here's what that looks like. And it's a beauty. So now that we have this all set up, let's set up our main to invoke our app run and to catch any errors and print them out. Just gonna simplify my includes a little bit here because we don't need to do a lot of this stuff. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna boot. I'm gonna resolve out a window instance and then we're going to call app run, passing in a reference to the window. We get an exception, we're gonna catch that. Let's print it out. Print it out as an error, but few things. We don't want any line information because that information has actually been embedded in here, right? We put the line information in here. We don't want the information of this line. It doesn't, we don't care about that. And I also want, don't want to do a stack trace from this point. Again, it, it, it doesn't make any difference. So yeah, we log an error and let's also, uh, let's also get funky with it a little bit. Let's put out a message box here. Um, we'll make it pop up in the foreground and we'll have an error icon that'll make a little noise. So it'll be even more, uh, even easier to see when something has gone terribly wrong. And then we'll exit with negative one. Bob's your uncle. Okay, so we've got this all set up. Let's go in our project properties here. Gonna make sure we're on all configurations. We're gonna go to the linker, the input, and we are going to add in here D3D12 and DXGI. We're gonna need those bad boys. Just a quick build to make sure everything is okay. And yeah, there's this one problem. App run must return a value. Fair enough. Uh, and let's just do, let's put just one line of code in here to test out our error reporting and make sure everything's working. So we're gonna include D3D12. We're gonna include WRL because hell, you can't, you can't do this shit without WRL. We're gonna using com pointer because we use it so much. I don't wanna type this bullshit every time. And let's, let's, let's call a function. Let's blow things up. So here's the function to create the D3D12 device. It's one of the first ones that you will be using. Uh, so we do this stuff in here. It doesn't like check because we haven't included Graphics error.h. Now it is happy. Although there exists D3D feature level 12 too, for whatever reason, it fails on my system currently. So this is a good test to make sure the error checking stuff is working. Ah yes, forgot the return zero. Okay. No, oh, this is, yeah, it's understandable. So let's create this thing here. Let's do extern checker token check and then in the cpp file the checker token check make that global there and now how do you like me all right let's go and graphics error the parameter is incorrect and we get our location in here and i can go okay and the program will exit and i can look at my output and it gives me a line number and it tells me the line number where things blew up. Very nice, okay. And if I were to set this to 12 zero, which I know to be a working value on my system, then we have no errors. Everyone is happy. Program exits immediately, of course, because this function returns 
which means we exit this scope and we clean up our window and everything is good. So now, perfect. We are now poised to begin our shallow dive into D3D12. Minor addendum here. Uh, looks like they changed D3DX12. Before it was just a single header that had everything in it. And now it looks like it's been split up into a bunch of separate different headers. So we got to download those all. You can apparently use NuGet to get them, but we're just going to get the code and copy it in. So we'll just take everything that starts with D3DX and we will copy that over here. Include in project and all this should go away. So this should be good now. We're ready to go for the next video. In the next video, hopefully I will be able to get all the, the, the very minimal things set up to be able to clear the screen and present to the buffer, maybe cycle colors. We'll get our presentation loop all set up. But until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like button. It helps a lot. And I will see you again with some more D3D12 Shallow Dive.